Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. It's Friday, which means it is Attic Find Friday. It has been a crazy week. We've had guests at the house all week. I'm actually trying to zip this one out before they get back. So, Attic Find Friday. Uh, I have a little delay in my book, unexpectedly, but uh, still working towards finishing it up. This article comes to us from Forbes. This is an early 2018 find in Hartford, Connecticut, by a man named Bob who was a contractor in Connecticut. Um, Bob, back in 1987, bought a house. And uh, as he was going through it, he discovered a, uh, in the corner of the attic, some dolls, old clothing and shoes, and empty suitcases, and also a small wooden box with trading cards inside. He opened it up, and inside on the top of it was about 200 obscure late 19th century stage actors like Sadie Martineau and Lillian Grubb, people I've never heard of, but those are the people who are mentioned in all of these articles. The cards featured these actors and actresses either heavily costumed or scantily clad, at least scantily clad for the 19th century. Uh, you decide if you think this is scantily clad for nowadays. Um, these cards were used as ads for sweet caporal cigarettes and other, uh, other cigarettes at the time. Bob didn't really go through it much. He didn't recognize anybody in these cards, so he stored it in his basement for the next 30 years. And in late 2017, early 2018, he decided to go through it, he popped it open, and underneath those 200 cards, he found dozens of other cards of baseball cards, uh, baseball players, also of the late 19th century. Total, between the two of them, 287 cards. The value was more than $70,000. He started Googling these cards, especially the baseball cards, and he said, oh man, these are valuable. These are, these are crazy valuable. Uh, one card out of all the 287 was worth more than half the total, and that is the 1888 N338-2 SF Hess Mickey Welch. Uh, SF Hess was a Rochester company that inserted cards into Creole cigarettes. Uh, this is one of the scarcest sets of the 19th century. One thing in my research discovered that PSA has it listed as 1889, SGC has it listed as 1888. I'm not sure if there's a difference here or if I'm confusing things, but uh, yeah, just something that I, I tried figuring out and couldn't quite figure out. The SGC pop report, even though this card says N338-2, the only Mickey Welch I could find in their pop report on an N330 card was N332, so not N338, so it's very confusing. I'm not sure there's a, um, if you know, let me know in comments, because this is something that I could not crack myself. Mickey Welch, though, is a Hall of Famer, is the only Hall of Famer in baseball history born on the 4th of July kind of interesting, I guess. Uh, he pitched for the Troy Trojans and the New York Gothams from 1880 to 1992. 1892. In those 13 seasons, he amassed 307 victories. In one year, he won, I think it was 44 games. He was throwing over 500 pitches, uh, 500 innings a couple of these seasons and close to 500 innings. Uh, he was a soft tosser, so you know nowadays guys throw fast, they have to throw fast, and they wear down a lot easier, but he didn't have a fastball. He really only threw uh, off-speed pitches. Much, he said that he outsmarted batters with curveballs, things like that. He had a war of 62. He was actually elected by the Veterans Committee in the 1970s, about uh, 80 years after he retired, well after his death too. He holds the record for most strikeouts, most consecutive strikeouts to start a game with nine. Uh, his, interestingly, <clears throat> his career 2.71 ERA isn't that much better than league average at that time. His ERA plus was 113, which isn't great. It's, it's a little better than average. Uh, he also is uh, cited by some as the first pinch hitter in Major League Baseball history. So this card, the Mickey Welch card, sold for $38,000 by Heritage Auctions. It is, there are fewer than five known to exist of this card. There's only one in the SGC pop report that I could find. 
and I couldn't find any in the PSA pop report. And so if there are fewer than five known, maybe, maybe there's one in Beckett, maybe there are some known that haven't been graded, I'm not sure. Again, if you know, let me know in comments, I'm curious. Um, at the time, in 2018, the set only had 37 cards submitted from the entire set between SGC and PSA. It's not much more than that now. There are more of his 1887 Old Judge cards. There are actually dozens of those just in the PSA Pop Report. In the low dozens. Interestingly, he appears to be wearing the same dotted tie that's uh, seen in the Old Judge cards from 1887 by, worn by New York Mets. It's actually noted in the label by both SGC and PSA in those Old Judge cards. And he appears to be wearing that same dotted tie. In this find, he also found, Bob, the contractor, also found 10 previously undocumented cards. Among them are baseball great Buck Ewing's brother, John, and pitcher Ed Crane, otherwise known as Cannonball, because he was a large man and uh, he threw fast at the time. He was a fast pitcher. Uh, also, Cannonball Crane set an Australian record by throwing a cricket ball 384 feet almost 385 feet in Melbourne. Those actress cards I mentioned at the beginning of the video sold for a combined $852 in one lot. None of the other baseball cards appeared, from what I'm able to tell, sold for more than a thousand, but a lot of them sold for mid to high hundreds, 500 to $800 roughly. So ultimately I think that pre-sale estimate of $70,000 sounds pretty accurate based on the number of cards in there and the fact that a lot of them were going for hundreds of dollars and one went for 38,000. Seems pretty accurate. I just try to imagine myself, and, and again, I've talked about this before, if I, I've always wanted to buy a house. When I, when I was younger and I was sh house shopping, I always thought it'd be awesome to buy an old house and find a big old card collection in the attic. Never did, obviously, but it's the dream. It's, it's always been my dream ever since I was a young adult, I guess, buying houses at the time. So, what's the best card you've ever found that you didn't realize you had or that uh, you just found somewhere? Let me know in comments. Hope you guys have a great weekend. I'm still hoping to put out another awesome video tomorrow, Saturday, and then my normal Clearing the Bases episode on Sunday. All right, guys. Thanks.